Hey guys, good morning. Happy Friday. We are not going into the weekend quietly. That is a fact. That is a fact. I just finished making some smoothies for the kids and for myself. I know that doesn't look that appetizing, but it has a lot of spinach in it. Part of the reason for this is I was inspired by my conversation with Dr. Daria yesterday. Dr. Daria is a friend of Smarter News. She's an ER room doctor. She's also a mom, and she just wrote this great book, Mom Hacks, um, like tips for moms for for health for your kids and and for your family, not just for moms, but for parents overall. Anyways, it's a great read. So we did a little interview yesterday and took some of your questions to her where she answered. And one of the things that she's talked about regarding diets is making sure once a week you get a really good smoothie in. <laughs> so I'm like, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we do smoothie Fridays. Get ourselves ready for the weekend. You know, start off good. What is that? Could be a good idea, guys. Oh. Just say we could try different recipes. I like this. I like where this is going. Okay, let me sit down. I have to sit down for this. We have a lot to talk about. Should we start with the hard stuff or should we start with the light stuff? Hey, that card is very Let's see. Let's start with something that no one's going to be really talking about today, which is the fact that it's George Washington's birthday. And we selected a quote from him, uh, from his farewell address to lawmakers when he was leaving the presidency. It's interesting to note that every year, the Senate reads his farewell address out loud. And it may not happen on its birthday, his birthday, the Senate's not in session right now, so they're not going to do it today, but likely next week. But it's a tradition that they always follow. Because the address has a lot of really interesting perspectives about leadership in America and also sort of observations about the country early as it was. And it's fascinating to read. So I'm posting the full farewell address on our website today in case you sort of feel like giving it a shot. But I also selected a key quote about Americans, what George Washington observed about Americans. Remember, he started during a time when there were no Americans <laughs> because there was no country. Uh, you know, there was no United States of America. So it's a really great uh, card today and just something to think about. The whole reasons why we have President's Day holidays because of George Washington's birthday. So just keep that in mind. It's his birthday today. Uh, in the meantime, let me get through the tough news, which is what we're learning about the Jesse Smollett case in Chicago. And I think it's really important to note that every American is innocent until proven guilty. And what's difficult when there is a rush to judge on either side, early on in the case or even later, oftentimes there's no balance, right? There's no balance, which isn't good for anybody. And I think this is a really good case where we're seeing that. There was a rush to support Jesse Smollett without evidence initially, and then there is now a rush of judgment against him because a lot of folks are have been burned in the process, including the media. And just a note on that, this is something you're not going to see on our website today. Uh, if we need more, we will dig into it, but I just want you to have it in the back of your mind. What you're going to start seeing and what I've already seen is there are different media outlets saying, okay, the Jesse Smollett case may not be real. They're already saying it's not real. I mean, there hasn't been a trial, so let's just, they're already saying it's not real. But hate crimes have risen in America over the last several years. And therefore, it proves that this was worthy of us covering, even though many of them covered it in an irresponsible way. Sorry, just a little singing in the background. <laughs> so one thing I should think you should know about hate crime statistics, why are you so crazy? Why are you so crazy? What just happened to you? Mm. One of the things I think you should know about hate crime statistics, and this is really important, they are voluntarily reported to the FBI by local law enforcement. So over the last several years, more local law enforcement has reported hate crimes to the FBI. The numbers of hate crimes have gone up. We don't have a precise clarity as to why that is. Is it because more people are reporting hate crimes? Is there because there are more hate crimes, and what are the reasons behind the hate crimes? We are no noting, the FBI notes, that many of the hate crimes are motivated by racial um, attacks or racial bias or bias against sexual orientation, but where does that come from? Because a lot of folks that like to assign blame to the political environment. So I just want you to know that there are some 
there's some debate about the those numbers and I just want you to kind of have an understanding of them because I think you're going to see them throughout the weekend. Okay. So what we do know is that the police have charged Jesse Smollett with a felony. We know that he's released on bond. Uh, he'll be back in court in March. And I think what's really one of the most interesting takeaways of the case is there's a highlight on Chicago, right? In the Chicago Police Department, America's third largest city, which is Chicago, has the most surveillance cameras of anywhere else in the United States. And private citizens or private businesses can actually opt into the system if they want to with, with their own cameras or with private cameras. But there's tens of thousands of cameras around the city, and the cameras are really important in helping police detectives piece together their version of events, which says that these two brothers that Jesse Smollett hired um, were behind the attack. Now, Jesse Smollett's attorneys say what happened with law enforcement yesterday in the public spectacle, they say, of the police presser was an injustice to Jesse because uh, it was politically motivated and he didn't get a fair shake because he should be presumed innocent until proven guilty. So these are the two sides that are coming forward. We have a request to watch Tarzan in our household. Sorry. So just want you to kind of know about what's happening there. Let's see what, how, again, what more develops in this case, if anything. We have a little time before we likely will see more. So I just wanted to mention that. If you guys have any questions about that case, I'm happy to answer them best to my ability. Uh, I watched a ton of interviews yesterday, so much footage. And I have to tell you just personally, this is not, you know, this, this is my personal perspective. And I don't share that often. Um, I have no facts to back this up. I just think there's a lot. I mean, I just, I said it yesterday. I'll say it again today. I think there's a lot more to this story. And I think we're, we're still very much at the beginning. Just remember, presumed innocent until guilty. And remember what I said about the hate crime statistics. So just something I think you should know. All right. Let's talk a little bit. Two more things I just want to tell you really quick. Um, you know, Israel sent a, a lunar, what do they call it? It's not a lunar rover. I forget the name. They send a basically, a, I don't want to say it's a, I'm like, I don't want to say it's a rocket. A Luna lander, I think they call it. Basically, the Israelis have a lunar lander attached to a SpaceX rocket that was launched last night. And if it gets to the moon, which it's expected to do, it's in orbit now, Will uh, Israel will be the fourth country to land on the moon. China just did this recently, just, just landed on the moon. Now, they're not sending up astronauts. You know, Israel is not sending up astronauts. But this sort of underscores, again, this sort of new space race that we're seeing. And I, I'm thinking about it because of the, the space command or the space force that this current administration is in, investing in. If is, Israel gets to the moon, that'll be a really big deal. Israel has a lot of enemies in the world. And, you know, if you have control or access to space through satellites or whatever else, it gives you great capability. So again, that would, Israel would be the four, only the fourth country in our history to land on the moon if that's the case. It was launched from Florida, from Cape Canaveral, Florida. So, uh, and, and, and interestingly enough, there was a, it looked again like a public-private partnership, you know, like we have in space right now with SpaceX. Um, so we'll see. Let's see what happens with Israel. And finally, did you guys see this story about Nike? I have to just mention, this is kind of like a weird, fun story to know about. There, there's a basketball game between Duke and North Carolina. And one of the star freshman players, like 30 seconds into the game, he like tries to make a cut here. I'm like giving you my basketball moves. He puts his foot down, his shoe breaks. President Obama, by the way, was in the stands. And apparently was like, his shoe broke. It was a Nike shoe. And it did legitimately break. I put the video on the website so you can see it. Nike stock lost more than a billion dollars yesterday because of what happened on Wednesday night. And there's questions about the quality of Nike's products. I, I saw it was up in pre-market trading today. Stock market news is difficult because it's a snapshot from a day. It's not something that necessarily is telling, but you know, what a remarkable chain of events. You think like one thing in your life can, I mean, really can take you down a different path. That's a great example, right? So sort of an interesting story. I thought, you know, I don't know if you guys have Nike products, but uh, I mean, the shoe like completely uh, just falls apart. 
it just does. So that was sort of interesting. Um, okay, guys, this weekend I'm posting on the website um, through our newsletter. So if you haven't signed up for that, just sign up at smarternews.com and just put your email in. Our board meeting from this week, if you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube. Um, an interview with Dr. Daria that's super fun. Excuse me. <laughs> Am I drinking? Like, what's happening? <laughs> Which is really, really fun. Um, I'm excited for you just to take a listen. Totally not, not have anything to do with the news. A little bit of news. I did ask her about what she thinks about federal policies for vaccinations because that's been floated out there. And um, anyways, it, definitely check that out. And also, I'm writing a piece. It's a longer kind of editorial about why we made the decision on Smarter News not to cover the Jesse Smollett case until today and why I think the structure of media, it's not just editorial decisions, but the very structure of media today in America enables these stories to be told at such um, high speed and high rate of uh, exposure. So if you'd like to check that out, definitely sign up on uh, our newsletter. Of course, I'll always post all that through social media as well. I want to make this easy for you. So whatever is easier for you is easy for me. Also, just want to mention a lot of you were really curious about the right to repair legislation that is out there. Right to repair legislation, if you're just joining us, is basically consumer advocates saying, I want to be able to repair my refrigerator and not go to KitchenAid. KitchenAid is my refrigerator. So, but I can't because KitchenAid doesn't make the parts public and doesn't make any of their information public, so I can't repair it myself. And legislation in more than a dozen states is trying to change that. It's really, it's really an interesting story. I have no desire to fix my refrigerator, <laughs> just in case you were curious. Uh, but it probably would be nice to have the ability to. And, you know, it is, you kind of are beholden to the manufacturers for everything. And that's why you, uh, you know, when, when something breaks, how often you get it repaired versus the expense of this just replacing it. So it's a, it's a very interesting story. Anyhow, all right, guys, have a great weekend. Don't fear. We will continue to watch the big stories that are coming next week. The president's going to be overseas. We got a lot, you know, it's Vietnam, North Korea summit. There's a lot going on. And we will be with you and everything will be okay. <laughs> And please definitely flag us in stories that you think are interesting because we always appreciate that. All right. Uh, info at smarternews.com. And have a great weekend, guys. Smoothies. Remember, Smoothie Friday might be a thing. Talk to you soon.